Uh, hey, friend, welcome to Refuel. I couldn't be more thrilled you're with us. We're going to spend the whole week together. And I'm honored to have you here. And let me tell you why I'm so excited about this. We're going to have a conversation about what the Bible says about habits of developing a healthy heart. Why are we doing this? Because there is an epidemic. There's an epidemic of heart disease. And I'm not talking physically. I'm talking emotionally and spiritually. I'm going to list the other day. Heart condition. Lots of Bible-believing Christians today are filled with anything other than a healthy heart. Okay? They're almost the opposite of an emotionally healthy Christian. And I, mean, listen, I know people, we all know these people, man. They're toxic Christians with a bitter heart, a hate-filled heart, a stressed-out heart, an anxious heart, a judgmental heart, a discouraged heart, a selfish heart, a self-centered heart, an angry heart. And this list goes on and on and on, okay? And I don't want to live that way. Nobody wants to be around people living that way. What do we do? And one of the reasons this is so serious is this. Um, we've actually taken this bottle of eye drops, emptied it, and we filled it with cyanide. Okay? And all you have to do is put a couple drops of cyanide, here they go, into this water, stir it up a little bit, and would you recommend I drink it or not? Well, if you take a drink, oh, no, it's, I'm kidding. Um, what's happened is lots of people are ingesting things that are so toxic. There are things that if you let them into your heart are so toxic, it kills out joy. It kills out encouragement. It kills out peace. I can't sleep at night. I'm stressed out. I'm angry all the time. And the election is just going to make it all worse. So we're doing a series called Habits of a Healthy Heart because some things are great for your emotional health, spiritual health, spiritual vitality, your relationship with God. In other words, if you're kind of going, man, one of the keys to life is try to become the person your own kids even want to be around, okay? Healthy heart conditions lead to that kind of a thing. So all week long, matter of fact, tune in every day, okay? The entire week, we are going to unpack the five habits of healthy hearts, but we're going to give you both, okay? And we're starting this off today with this. What kind of practices? Grace, which is all over the Bible, and God has a supply of it for you. Grace is better than guilt. In other words, most of us are stressed, guilt-ridden, depressed about ourselves, uh, insecure, because we're looking back and we feel like, man, you don't know me. I did this. I did this. In other words, let the grace of God, the entire healthy heart condition by letting the grace of God resolve your past. Um, I, the, my favorite, my favorite story in the Bible about this is this. Peter has denied Jesus three times, sworn, literally, literally walked away from Jesus when Jesus needed him most. Okay? Then Jesus is crucified, died, and then he rises again. Now, if you're Peter, Jesus coming back alive, is this good news or is it bad news? Okay? And when Jesus spots him, and he's made breakfast on the beach, and then Peter realizes it's Jesus. He jumps in, swims to him, and here in John chapter 21, the greatest conversation in history, Jesus looks at this complete disaster of a failure, like me, like a lot of us. He looks at Peter, and he here's what he does. He asks him three present tense questions. Do you love me? And he gives him three future tense assignments feed my sheep. And not one time does Jesus bring up his past. That's the good news of the grace of God. And sometimes you just need to get in the presence of God and allow the forgiveness and grace of God wash your past away because God could not care less about your past. He is very interested in your future. And I decided to get real with you on this first devotional of this week. Um, this is embarrassing. I don't really like to talk about this too much. I don't think I've ever, I don't think I've ever put this out. Um, my wife and I were living in Chicago, um, four young kids. I'm a professor at two graduate schools, a university, and there's just a lot going on, a lot going on with young kids, a lot going on in life, a lot going on with just surviving Chicago. And, um, and we have some things happen. And this is embarrassing to admit, um, my heart got really hard. And I let it get hard. 
and a hard heart is a bad condition. And my heart got hard toward my wife. I kind of fell a lot. I just, my family, everything, I kind of fell out of love with God, fell out of love with my wife, fell out of love with my kids, fell out of love with life. And, and the, maybe some of you, nobody knew it. Nobody knew it except for my wife, okay? I still spoke, I still did all this stuff, um, and nobody knew it um, except for me and my wife, Carol. And the problem is this, it lasted a long, long time. And I end up, and it is like eight months later, sometimes we keep a hard heart or a, way too long. And my bitter hard heart, um, I go to, I, I'm actually, it's August. I'm in Fresno, California, vacationing in August, which tells you how low a life can sing. And this buddy of mine named Bernie, one of my best friends, um, Bernie, I'm hanging out with him for the week. And Bernie was going to this church and he goes, hey man, we're having a revival week, you gotta come. Well, when you have a hard heart, you avoid church. So I didn't go the entire week. And they had Monday night, Tuesday night. Finally, Bernie's going, this pastor's the best dude. He's the pastor of the largest church of God in Oregon, all of this kind of stuff. And so I finally go into church with him on Friday. You don't want to take a wild guess where I sat. I sat in the last row. They were all the hard-hearted sinners sit. And I'm sitting in the last row, and they're worshiping, and I'm just kind of not really worshiping. And then this guy gets up, and he gives a message. And he gives this message, and it is like straight at me. And and I mean, I, I, this is like, God is kindly going, this is your night. You cannot continue to live in one of these heart conditions, but there's a battle in me. Am I gonna let go of this guilt I'm now feeling, and I'm gonna let go of all this garbage, or what's, what am I gonna do? And this guy gives an invitation, and it was not the kind of wimpy, like, if you just want to make a wink or raise your hand or something, it is like a, come up, come forward, the buses will wait. And everybody stands up, they start singing a song, it's called Just As I Am. Some of you know that, well, I'm actually thinking, I'm leaving just as I was. So I walk over, and I start to walk out, and I froze, and I couldn't do it. And I stopped there, and something in me kind of exploded with the thought, I don't want this bitter, discouraged, angry heart condition to be my permanent condition. Something happened and I froze in the aisle and I began the longest walk of my life. I start walking to the front of this church. And the problem is this, at this point, you wanna take a wild guess how many people have gone forward? Nobody, I'm it, the lone sinner. And the problem is some of these people know who I am. And I know as I'm walking up, they're going, I knew it, one of those evangelist pastors, that, you know, but I don't care. I'm all choked up. I walked up and this church has kind of a cool thing. They have sort of an altar at the front. And if you walk forward, you kneel at this altar and, and, um, and you know what happens. Once one person goes, what happens? I, I mean, 25 other people go and pretty soon this altar thing is packed. Everybody's kneeling down. And this church has kind of a cool tradition. Somebody comes up and prays for you. And so pretty soon, 24 of the 25 people have somebody praying for them. Everybody except me, <laughs> the untouchable. So the pastor who preached comes over and sits down next to me and just says, what's up? And this 60 year old pastor from Oregon and I, long after everybody's gone, we just sit there and I pour out the whole story for him, okay? I'm stressed about the number of kids. I'm stressed about all this kind of stuff. I'm stressed about all this stuff. And we're wrapped up and he says to me, I had the same, like he had the same story. He literally went, I had young kids. I had a busy ministry. I had this, I had this. And then he tells me about, and he looks at me and says, having all these kids has been my greatest ministry. And he walks through all of this stuff. And it turns out it was almost like reading a page out of his book from 25 years ago. And it was like God set this thing up. And he prays for me and we walk out and I give him a big hug. And he said, let's stay in touch. And he walks away and I have no other way to explain this to you, but I have not been the same since. And you can check that out with my wife. 
Um, you just go to Carol. And uh, like, it literally, one encounter with the grace of God, and I have never been the same. I also haven't been perfect. Carol will confirm that as well, okay? But what I really want to wrap this up by saying is this. Um, Proverbs says, watch over your heart with all diligence, for from it flow the springs of life. And I have had a not perfect, but incredible last 30 years since that little church in Fresno, California. Yes, my life was changed, vacationing in Fresno, California. And what happened to me in that church was this, I walked into that church thinking my problem was my finances, my problem was my circumstances, my problem was the government. My, I was walking in there thinking my problem is my wife, my problem is the number of kids I have, my problem is the number of stress I'm on, the promises. I walked into that church thinking these are all my problems. All these things are problems. They're not solving. And what I realized in one message was this. My problem wasn't any of that stuff. My problem was I had a hard heart. And once God pointed that out and I softened my heart, God took care of every other thing. Don't let the condition of your heart, if it's bitter or angry or negative or whatever it is, or guilt-ridden, whatever it is, come to Christ, empty it all out, receive a fresh start, because you'll get the next great 30 years. God bless. I can't wait for tomorrow. We're here all week. Soften your heart.